Hi there, welcome to number one Geeky Design Saz, and we're back with something a little bit special. I went up in my parents' loft the other day and I found this bad boy. I was not expecting it, but I am so glad I have because I have been watching a lot of Amiga stuff on YouTube myself. And to find out that I'm actually able to be joined part of that community as a uh, restorer and uh, upgrader, I have an opportunity. So, what are we going to do here today? Well, we've got this episode is all about getting this uh, up to standard. So, we've got a few things that we need to need to think about. So. First things first, we need to make sure the Amiga works. Uh, what I've got done is I have a an adapter that goes into the VGA ports. Just uh, I can pop that over there. You should be able to see that. Is it uh, just just uh, going into the comp uh, audio into uh, this adapter here, which is powered for the, for the short term by a, uh, one of my old uh, charging batteries. So let's put that through there. And we'll turn that on and find where the wire's up there. There we go. Continue on. Mini joy. Right. So, as you can see, we've got a 3.0 ROM, uh, which, from what I understand, will need to be changed to a 3.1, I think it is, ROM. So that's the first thing, that's the first thing I'm going to probably have to do to update the computer. Uh, it's just so that if I am going to upgrade the computer, it, it's, the, it's one of the basic platforms and it solves a lot of the problems from the Amiga. So the next thing is, if I just uh, pop down to the Amiga there, I'm going to grab my Alien 3 2 with uh, Free Apache uh, game and stick Alien 3 in. Sounds like it's, it's grasping for one. For a thing. Actually, that's, uh, that's gone quite quickly, to be fair. This request is a distant. Ha! Ah. Ah, uh, this is bringing back memories. This is bringing back good old memories. Joystick. Oh, and there we go. Alien Breed 2. Oh. Is that because that's run out of battery power? There we go. Just with that. It's going to be very bright all of a sudden. Anywho, as you can see, from the old refresh right there, but, uh, Been on That's a bit worrying. And we've got a dodgy cable at the back. We're going to have to have a look at that when it uh, goes off. So, yeah, we've got, we've got the game working at least. So as you can see, it's not in terrible condition. The keys definitely need retro brighting. Uh, we need to get some of the marks off here. We desperately need to clean. So the
what I did before you start taking apart your Amiga. Um, I am a complete little amateur at this game. And the game it is. Now, from what I have learnt is you take the Amiga off from the front. And as you can see, you'll have the, um, you won't be able to see from there, you've got the uh, hello going inside here. Now, from what I understand, the keyboard needs to come off. It looks like that sits underneath there like that, which can move over there. It's actually has a hard drive slot in it. We just gotta be careful about this, this particular thing here, down here. So this is an interesting development. Now I could probably take that out, can I? As you can see, this is all experimental stuff. That's uh, the part out, so we can now put that to one side. We can now fit the keyboard a bit over there. Now, here's where the trick starts. Because the inside of here, you don't just pull this out. Apparently, you need to pull bits of it up, which is fun with the camera in the way. What I might do actually is take off the, the plate. This doesn't seem phone design as some of the ones I've seen. I think maybe some people have removed their bits and pieces already. Let's take that. There we go. Let's take that. It's all going to come out anyway. Hopefully you can see that. There you go. There you go. Just on that side. Just want to be very careful with this. I don't want to break anything. Ah, there we go. There's the sneaky little buggers. Don't know if you can see that. Hopefully you can. Yeah, there's a. There's a uh, couple of screws under here that seems to be holding the uh, the board in. Now, if anybody wants to scream at me about oh. That sounds like that's the whole thing that's just come off there. Which I suppose in one way is a good thing. But hopefully I haven't damaged that keyboard connector. That's the, the hard drive for so this, the floppy drive off. Now, here's the interesting part. How do I get the heat shield off. I think it's a question of bending these bad boys up. I can see why a lot of people have probably taken this heat shield off because it's a lot easier to do uh, restoration jobs about that in the way. It's the only port come off as it does. Okay. Looks like that. Goes all the way across like so. As I said, guys, I'm just trying to be really careful. So if I look like I'm struggling, it's probably because I am. So these are the clips. Ah, there's a clip there. So has that. Oh, wait a second, what are you? These two here. Just uh, change over to a flat head. You can get this up out of the way. That looks like the memory board, is that? 
Maybe. Okay, so that needs to come up as well. Now, if anybody knows, the fact that I'm, I am going to have to put this back on. I'll explain in a bit why. I can explain now, to be fair. Um, this is going to be set off, and I'll go over the reasons why I'm going to set it off. Are there any screws in the bottom here? Yeah. Okay. <sighs> right, so it looks like that's coming off. That's coming off. Ah! One of the bend over hooks. It's on this side here. So that is a big fat no. Ah, I see it. The actual keyboard mount is hiding the culprit. There we go. I'm thinking about it. Can I get this in and out? Right, you don't pull this out, you pull that up. And I just can't get into it, so. Okay, so that's the, that's the plate over and there's the board. Now, allegedly, you can lift these up. And there's one side up, there's another side up, and hopefully, woo, there we go. So, pop that through. Right, let's have a quick look at some of the issues that we may have here. The uh, capacitors down here, 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 there, and there, and they're all going to need replacing. Um, now, here's here's the facts. Okay, a lot of people are showing you on YouTube how to uh, sort your capacitors out yourself. Now, if you like me. Are a complete and utter amateur when it comes to um, when it comes to electronics, then it's probably easier for you to uh, send it off. Now here's here's the facts. Okay. Uh, now I've been on Amazon and I have done the research. I've done my research, boys and girls. Done my research to uh, this is a later model because uh, you can see that this has got a pin that goes through here. It's a revision 1D. There we go, guys. Here's the board written down there. Uh, A1200 revision 1D4. So, uh, let's, uh, I think, sorry, let's get back to, let's get back to the major points, the capacitors. The Capacitors that were used uh, by Commodore were the cheapest ones they could find at the time. So they are have potential for leaking. Now these here, 
look like they're starting to, to move. I'm not too sure if that's a problem or not, but at the end of the day, we need to make 100% sure that uh, they are safe to use. And we're not going to end up damaging the board by uh, things leaking. Um, so I had a look at the two options. So you can either, if you're, if you're brave, uh, you can replace them yourself, which going on Amazon, I've done an average cost here, like a soldering station is going to cost you approximately £25. A desoldering heat gun to take the ones off, that's going to cost you about £35, uh, which is pretty much £60 straight off. Uh, you can get a solder and desolder station for £50, but then on top of that, you've got your soldering wick, you've got your heat tape, you've got your solder, and then your capacitor kit, which, what's that? Uh, that's another 20, 25 pounds on top uh, to uh, do that. Alternatively, you can get a recapping service for 34 pounds plus postage. I also spoke to uh, somebody who also does a polymer kit, and that's gonna be sent off to them. Um, the one thing, that's 54.99. Now, Here's the difference. If you know what you're doing, if you know how electronics work, then it's probably okay for you to do it yourself. But if I need to replace this board, it's gonna cost me 300 pounds because that's how much they are at the moment. So, yeah, that ain't happening. <laughs> it's gonna get sent off, basically, and I'm gonna send it off to uh, the guys who I spoke to uh, and uh, who were very helpful in helping me understand the difference between a polymer uh, and uh, an electrolytic, electrolytic uh, one, which I'm going to go for the polymer ones because effectively it's a, a hard substance so they're not going to end up having the same problem. Now the other thing is, I just want to quickly check this bad boy because no, it seems okay but it does seem a little bit off. So the whole point of today is that we are going to uh, clean up the whole thing. Take off the LED. I'll just drop the screwdriver there. Right, the, the board is, is held on by these uh, screws, but the nice thing is, is because I've got to send the board with the heat shield on. when it goes away. So, hopefully we can come back. Yeah, so this is the reason, I think, why most people just remove their heat shields for the display purposes. They don't actually tell you the bloody things are awkward to get on. Turned off. Definitely something that's gone through. It looks like rust. It's probably another reason why they take these things off. Yeah. For rust. 
stuff. It does just feel like aluminium more than steel. But there you go. Okay, so this is the board that gets sent off. In that thing, just pop it in the package. I'll find something and uh, I will contact the maker or the, the, the chip replacer and we will have a look at the review of the board next episode when we're able to uh, sort that out. Okay, so that's it for the moment. We've taken the uh, Amiga apart. We've got it ready to, ready to uh, send off to get the capacitors done. Uh, and ready for cleaning and retrobriting, which will be another episode in the future. Uh, I hope uh, watching me, a complete amateur, getting things sorted uh, was more of a help. Uh, I've noticed that a lot of the things did not mention anything about the heat shield getting in the way. Uh, so hopefully that has given you a little bit of a tip. I think that, that's, that was the main thing that came from it. The other thing I came from as well is the reasons why I've gone there, which I will go over once I've got the, uh, the board back. Um, Next up will be uh, cleaning the unit, the bits I can clean, and then looking at retro writing in the future. So I hope that's helped you. Uh, don't forget to press the like button or dislike if you didn't like it. Just let me know in the comment section if you want to have a discussion with me or if there's a problem uh, with something that I've said and you need to correct me because I'm an amateur. Thanks for watching, guys. See you soon. Bye bye.